So folks, obviously, with good reason, a lot of our focus is on the most immediate peril for old Donnie. Because right now, there's a case, whether it happens this week or what have you, where he could go down imminently, but it's not the most important one. And indeed, late last night, but also seconds ago, Old Donnie just took the biggest defeat he has yet in his documents case. Remember, that one has been running for months and months and months now. And Jack Smith has just put his foot on the pedal and scored a massive victory. And guys, no one's wrestling with what just happened. No one is really explaining it like it needs to be explained, at least in my opinion. Which is that a judge has just found Donald Trump guilty of criminal activity in a way they never have before. And it's shaking every thing to the core. I want to play a couple clips that really explain this because we have to understand what the judge this just did. The victory they gave to Jack Smith over Donald Trump this afternoon is only possible if the judge finds Donald Trump criminally guilty, at least in some sense. And we're going to break that down. But here's some of the basic details. Things, but two huge developments overnight. We're going to break it all down straight to the big news in the Trump classified documents case. A key deadline passed just moments ago at the top of the hour. Caitlin, this is extraordinary in so many ways. Can you walk through your reporting? Yeah, and there have been deadlines that we've just hit. One that happened at midnight for the Trump team. One that just happened a few minutes ago at 6 a.m. for the Justice Department. Our colleague, Caitlin Poland, said they did meet both of those deadlines. And there are a lot of investigations happening here. So to be clear, there are several going on surrounding the former president. Right now, what we are talking about is the classified documents probe. This is the special counsel's investigation into the documents that Trump took with him when he left office. This is the latest that is what's happening. At midnight, there was a deadline for Trump's attorneys who are seeking an emergency intervention. Basically, they don't want his defense attorney, Evan Corcoran, to have to go testify again before the grand jury without being able to cite attorney-client privilege, which he did previously, declining to answer some of their questions. What we were told was the 6 a.m. deadline was for the Justice Department to respond to what the Trump team had in by midnight. So we are told both of these deadlines have been met. Now, it all depends on the D.C. Circuit Court. They will be making the ultimate decision here. If they do not step in, if we do not hear from him, we could see Evan Corcoran, Trump's defense attorney, having to go before the grand jury and testify again, this time without that protection of attorney-client privilege. It would be a monumental ruling here. And the reason this matters is because for the first time, we are getting the clearest view yet that the judge is agreeing with prosecutors here, the judge who ruled on Friday, that Trump may have used Evan Corcoran, this attorney, in furtherance of a crime. Before, it was a little ambiguous whether it was Trump or Corcoran who they believed and they were alleging may have committed a crime here or used them in furtherance of a crime. Now it's making clear they believe it's the former president. They, the judge on Friday believes the prosecutors met that burden, that threshold, to have him come in and in this remarkable testimony and not be able to use attorney-client privilege. But now it is up to the D.C. Circuit Court to make the ultimate decision because the Trump team has gone to them. We also know the Justice Department is saying they have evidence to back up this decision. We know they have surveillance videos from Mar-a-Lago. That could be part of what's happening here, those surveillance videos of the rooms, where the documents were kept, and that is a big aspect here. The reason, you know, and what this all means is that attorney-client privilege may not apply. The DOJ still wants to talk to Trump, uh, Trump's attorney, Evan Corcoran, and Jennifer Little, but the focus here has really been on Evan Corcoran. And the testimony of this could be critical here. So we are waiting ultimately just to see what the D.C. Circuit Court decides. If they do decide that Evan Corcoran should go and testify without attorney-client privilege, it would be one of the biggest rulings we've probably ever had in this nation. So, Caitlin, to clarify, it has been filed, but we don't know yet what's in the filing, correct? Es essentially, what we, we don't know because all this is under seal, which means we're learning a lot of this from what's being posted on the docket and what we're hearing from our sources with understanding of what's going on behind the scenes. And so we're waiting to see what they filed overnight. We believe it was just really more of an explanation of their opinions. But this all happened very quickly. I think we found out about these deadlines around 8 or 9 p.m. last night. That's not a lot of time for the Trump team to file or the Justice Department to have that 6 a.m. deadline. So really, everyone is waiting to see what this decision is going to look like. Yeah.
So what that notes is that this is the single biggest thing yet. As we've talked about, this will erode the attorney-client privilege. And that's happened in some other cases. Like we've seen a judge with the Georgia case, a California judge, because they were looking into a Trump lawyer who lived in California. And a judge at that point said that, you know, the, the, the more likely than not, him and Trump conspired to commit crimes. And so therefore, I am opening up the files. But this is the first time that this has happened in the federal documents case or the J six case, anything under the umbrella of Jack Smith. And while this is being appealed, the chief judge of the circuit court has already made her ruling. And so at least for now, the decision stands. And what it effectively says is that Jack Smith is allowed to raid through and pour through all of these documents, not only get more testimony, but get notes and documents from this lawyer about their conversations and whatnot with Trump and their reflections on it. Because as the judge notes, this more likely than not includes criminal activity. This part really expands on it. Uh, Smith investigation for, for the Mar-a-Lago documents. Uh, the, the, my God, uh, it looks like that's getting worse. That's he took a turn yesterday that should cause Trump even more concern than what's happening uh, with the D.A. in Manhattan. Yeah, Joe and Mika, I've been saying from the beginning that the greatest threat to Donald Trump's future freedom is the Mar-a-Lago document matter. And for those who say that, well, you know, Pence did it, Biden did it, so that somehow insulates Donald Trump. No, it's not the possession of the documents. It's the refusal to give them back. It's the obstruction, 18 U.S.C., 1519, punishable by up to 20 years in prison. And it is mm. so unusual Ouch. to break through attorney-client privilege. That's what the court did here. They found that there was the crime fraud exception, that the lawyer, Evan Corcoran, was used to facilitate a crime. And what crime would that be but obstruction? And so here you had Christina Bob, who was one of Trump's lawyers, who sent a letter to the Department of Justice saying, we turned over all the documents. Well, that wasn't true. That's a lie. So is she guilty of obstruction? The grand jury heard from her, or the DOJ heard from her, one of the two, and she pointed the finger at Evan Corcoran, said, I didn't draft that letter. It was Evan Corcoran. Of course, you should never sign a letter that the drafter won't sign himself. And now Evan Corcoran is being brought in and he's going to have to testify. And there's evidence, apparently, that says that it was Trump who instructed Evan Corcoran to make these false statements. So one of these folks is going down for this, in my view. Is it going to be Trump? Is it going to be Evan Corcoran? Or is it going to be both? It looks like Evan Corcoran is starting to point the finger at his client. Again, we, we, we don't ignore New York. You know, earlier, uh, you know, the, the, the grand jury was supposed to meet today. I talked about that right after I posted that. Then the grand jury said we're not meeting. So we don't know what's happening there, but it's likely going to be the first mover. Nonetheless, this is a far bigger deal both because the potential penalties are much greater, but also it's, it's, you know, what Trump did to Daniels is something that he did largely as an individual. This is something he did as president. And as an ex-president, taking things that he could only get initially because he was president and then abusing that power he had and then once had, right, to take classified documents and all of that. It's a much greater affront to democracy, law and order, national security, the preservation of history and all of that. But it's a big deal because, again, it really hammers in on the lawyers. And this clip gets to the matter in plain language. Donald Trump knowingly and deliberately misled his own attorneys about his retention of classified materials after leaving office, a former top federal judge wrote Friday in a sealed filing, according to sources who described its contents to ABC News. Federal Judge Beryl Howell, in her role as chief judge of the district court in Washington, D.C., had been supervising Jack Smith's investigation, grand jury investigation, until Friday, when her term as chief just, just judge came to an end. The new chief judge is James Bosberg, who, like Judge Howell, was appointed by President Obama. ABC News reports that Jack Smith's office presented evidence to Judge Howell, quote, showing that the former president had committed criminal violations, according to the sources and that attorney-client privileges invoked by two of his lawyers could therefore be pierced. ABC News is reporting that Judge Howell ordered 
Trump lawyer, Evan Corcoran, to testify to the grand jury without the protection of the attorney-client privilege, and that Judge Howell, quote, also ordered Corcoran to hand over a number of records tied to what Howell described as Trump's alleged criminal scheme echoing prosecutors. Those records include handwritten notes, invoices, and transcriptions of personal audio recordings. Howell agreed prosecutors made a sufficient showing that on its face would appear to show Trump committed crimes. ABC went on to report, quote, prosecutors showed sufficient evidence that Trump intentionally concealed the existence of additional classified documents from Corcoran, sources said, putting Corcoran in an unwitting position to deceive the government. Evan Corcoran wrote a sworn statement signed by another Trump lawyer, which they gave to the Justice Department, in effect swearing under oath that they had turned over all of the government documents and classified documents in Donald Trump's possession, but when the FBI later executed a search warrant, they found more than 100 additional documents that were marked classified, including a classified document in Donald Trump's desk. After Trump lawyers swore under oath to the Justice Department that there were no more classified documents in Donald Trump's possession, the FBI actually found classified documents in his desk. If Donald Trump lied to Evan Corcoran and other lawyers working for him about his possession of those documents, then that is a very strong case of obstruction of justice against Donald Trump. The breaking news of the last hour reported by Politico is that Judge Howell's ruling is on an ultra fast track appeal schedule with a three judge panel of the Federal Circuit Court of Appeals with the Trump lawyers facing a midnight deadline for their filing and Jack Smith facing a 6 a.m. response deadline to the Trump attorney's filing. To many, that case involving the illegal possession of classified documents appears to be a more serious case than the Manhattan case about. Again, we need to say this clearly. Getting rid of attorney-client privilege, especially in a big case like this, is a high bar to cross, and it should be. You should feel confident 99.99% of the time in being honest with your lawyer so they can represent you as best as she or he can, right? Perfect sense. Nonetheless, if you're conspiring with your lawyer to commit crimes or, you know, something along those lines or a lawyer is helping you cover up crimes then that's not protected. And a judge has to find more likely than not that you are guilty of a crime. Now, he hasn't been convicted of anything yet, but much like with the David Carter thing when he looked into John Eastman, he had to find that a preponderance of evidence proved Donald Trump was guilty of some criminal activity and that was reflected in communiques with his lawyer. And this judge just did the same thing. They found that Donald Trump in court is guilty in the documents case of hiding something, at least more likely than not. Not necessarily to the threshold of conviction yet, but enough of a threshold to break the very solemn attorney-client privilege. People aren't talking about that guilt reality. A judge, again, has to see more likely than not Trump is guilty of something. Because if they weren't more likely than not, the judge shouldn't break attorney-client privilege. That's a big deal. It's a big win for Jack. And as usual, Trump is freaking out today.